Hey everybody, it's Dr. Aaron here, one of the good doctors of Abbey Research, and I'm very happy to be with you for an Abbey Research Reads book review today. I don't do them as often as Dr. Kristen. One of her many talents is the ability to speed read books. Um, and so when I get through a book that I have enjoyed and wanna share with you, I'm happy to hop on our Abbey Research Reads YouTube channel. If you are catching this book review and you haven't already followed or subscribed to our book review channel, Abbey Research Reads, please do so now. We would love to have you engage in conversation with us. We are both avid readers uh, and consumers of art through the medium of books. So we would love to talk to you about your recommendations, thoughts and feelings about what we're talking about. My Abbey Research Reads today is a review of the book Anangamising by Linda Lagarde Grover. Uh, Onigamising is the Ojibwe word for the Duluth area and roughly means the place of the small portage. Uh, and Duluth in Minnesota, if you're watching this from outside the United States. Uh, Linda is a member of the Boise Fort Band of Ojibwe who lives in Duluth and is a professor of American Indian Studies at the University of Minnesota Duluth. And her book, uh, Seasons of an Ojibwe Year, on uh, is framed in nonfiction short stories based on Linda's life through the framework that the four seasons are an integral part of Ojibwe culture. The four seasons of the year um, used to dictate the movements of Ojibwe people before the time of reservations and uh, American colonization and occupation of Ojibwe territories and land. So they used to dictate the movements of the people, but also the way they think about their lives as four seasons. And so she has used that as a framework to tell uh, stories from the four seasons of her life. And if you've never really encountered uh, native fiction or nonfiction, uh, I'm recommending this as a fantastic place to start. I absolutely adored this book from start to finish. It is the best of uh, empathy reads if you are non-native, non-Indian, and looking to explore those experiences in the world uh, because it is both universal and specific. She writes short stories about her, her grandmother's favorite recipes or what she loves about Thanksgiving or uh, the way she learned um, to make ribbon skirts with her uh, daughters and carried on that tradition. Um, it is universal in we, uh, you know, have these family traditions and stories and, and things that connect us to the land and to the people that we are related to. But it is very specifically also about her experiences as an Ojibwe woman growing up in the Duluth area, growing up as an Indian, going to an American school, all of her uh, relationships with that. And so it introduces you to a, a big part of 20th century uh, American Indian history in a way that if you're not familiar with it is really, really good introduction to residential and boarding schools and the forced assimilation of American Indian children through this policy. Um, it goes into a little bit the termination era as well and the US government's policy with Indian country and treatment of indigenous folks around the land that we now call the United States. So, you know, hopefully reading this book will bring you a sense of who Linda is and, and how she sees her relationship with the world and her family and her culture and her history and her people. Um, her writing is deeply accessible and lyrical and funny and insightful. Um, so I cannot recommend it enough. She has also written works of a work of fiction called uh, The Road Back to Sweet Grass, which is from 2014 that I literally just bought on Bookshop today because I was like, I have to read more of this woman's writing. Um, so highly, highly recommend these 200 pages of stories. And 
you can teach yourself some uh, Ojibwe words, which I butchered, but learned to recognize throughout uh, her writing and learn about Ojibwe culture and specifically um, Linda's experiences as a member of the uh, Boise Fort Band of Ojibwe peoples. So pick it up, folks. Engage with some Native nonfiction that'll hopefully lead you to more stories uh, and cultures because it is through the power of storytelling that we really can work towards uh, building empathy within ourselves and being truly inclusive in how we build communities and relationships with each other. So that is our very enthusiastic Abbey Research Reads for today. Please pick up Onegamai Sing Seasons of an Ojibwe Year from any local bookstore that you can find. And we will see you for our next book review. Take care. <laughs>